Hello. Continuing our work with limits and continuity, we're going to look at limits where x is not tending towards a particular number, it's tending towards infinity. Now, you have already dealt with situations where we have something tending to infinity when we were talking about the sum to infinity of a series of terms. So you've already touched upon this concept before, but we're going to uh, simply discuss the method for it again. There's an awful lot more maths technically involved in this. And again, it's not really on our course. So I'm just going to give you the method for how to deal with this. And we're not going to get into the meat of what's really going on as much as we often would, because we would need to focus on the course. So the limit as x tends to infinity of 10 divided by x is the first thing I am going to deal with. Uh, and I'm going to try and give you a little bit of intuition as to what's going to happen. So this isn't the way you will approach this problem. It's to give you an idea of why we're going to do what we're going to do in a slightly hand wavy type way. So we are going to sub in a few different values of x and see what our function. So our function is y is equal to 10 all over x. What is that going to look like as x tends to infinity? Well, I can't put in infinity but I can uh, see what the value is when I make x bigger and bigger. So if we start out with x is equal to 1, fairly neutral starting point, what would y be equal to? It would be equal to 10 all over 1, would be equal to 10. If x is equal to 100, we have y is equal to 10 all over 100, would end up being equal to a tenth, uh, x is equal to a thousand, we'd have y is equal to 10 all over a thousand, we would end up with 1 all over a hundred. What's the pattern? What are we seeing is happening as x gets bigger? What is happening to y? What is happening to our function? As x tends, sorry, that should be a thousand, as x tends towards infinity as it tends to get bigger and bigger and bigger our y value is tending closer and closer to zero we're getting closer and closer down to the number zero as x tends towards infinity so we would say as x tends to infinity y is going to tend to zero now that is Again, not the way that we're going to deal with these questions in general. In practice, if you are given a x to infinity type question like this one, what we're going to do is divide by the highest power of x, divide above and below by the highest power of x. I'm going to write down the English of it for you here. So in practice, if we're given a situation where we have the limit as x tends to infinity, we will always do the same thing. Divide every term by the highest power of x that we have in our question. Uh, and then let x tend to infinity. Now, why would we do that? It will become apparent when we start doing this problem here. So the limit as x tends to infinity of x squared plus 1 all over 2x minus 3. So let's follow our guidance. We're going to divide everything by the highest power of x. So the highest power of x that we've got here is x squared. So divide every single term by x squared. Now we're dividing above and below the line by the same amount, so we are not changing our function. Just to be clear, we're not introducing any new maths that you aren't technically familiar with, that we usually wouldn't bother doing a step like this, so it looks a little bit funny, but because we're dividing the top of the line by x squared and dividing the bottom of the line by x squared, we are not changing the value of our function. Now, perhaps it becomes apparent why it is we did that, but it'll become even more apparent when we do a little bit of simplifying now in our next line. x tends to infinity. Simplify, we have x squared divided by x squared is 1, plus there's no simplifying we can do there, all over 2x squared all over x squared is just 2, minus 3 all over x squared. Now, once we've done that, let x tend to infinity. And what's going to happen? Well, as x tends to infinity, 
1 divided by x squared is going to tend towards 0, and 3 divided by x squared is going to tend towards 0. So both of these terms that are still divided by an x are going to tend towards 0. They're going to become irrelevant as x gets larger. So the only stuff that's going to matter is our 1 and 2 here. So if we let that limit run, we end up with 1 plus 0 all over 2 minus 0, and we end up with a half. Now, what does that mean in practice? It means that as x tends towards positive infinity, the y output from our function is going to end up equaling a half at x equals infinity. So it never technically equals a half until x gets to infinity. We don't need to worry about the distinction in a huge amount in practice, but as x gets very, very large, as you sub in huge values of x into this function, you will get values for y that are very, very close to a half. That is the meaning of taking our limit as x tends to infinity. Now, that is pretty much what we need for our limits of functions. There's a huge amount more we could go into, but we don't have to, so we're going to move on. The last thing connected with limits, fairly well connected with limits, is discontinuity, which I've talked to you a little bit about already. Now, a discontinuity is exactly what it would mean in English. It's a break or a jump in a function at a particular value of x. Uh, and at that point, the e function is not going to be well defined. So we might get indeterminate or we might get an undefined type of function. So. We've already come across a situation like this one where we have y is equal to a fraction and we want to set, uh, we want to know what the limit is when x is equal to 2 or when x tends to 2. But if I sub in x uh, tending to 2 in here, I haven't done out the maths, you already know how to take the limit as x tends to 2. You'll get y is equal to 0 divided by 0. Now we remember the meaning of that word, we remember the word for that, it's indeterminate. So when we find that y was equal to 0 over 0, when we subbed in x is equal to 2, we'd go back and try to factorize our function. And when we've done our factorization, we will find that at, as x tends to 2, we end up with y equal to 10, or y tending to 10. Now, what that would look like in terms of the graph of the function, where the function itself is not defined, but the limit is, you would end up with what's called a whole discontinuity or a removable discontinuity. A little bit outside the bounds of our course, but just to mention that's the language that would go with it. And you would have a little circle that would effectively say, at x is equal to 2, there's a problem. There's a little hole in our function where the function is not properly defined. The limit exists. The limit is just 10. So the y value across here would just be 10. But there's a hole in our function. There's a x value that doesn't have a y value for it. The function breaks at that point. So that is the first type of discontinuity. And it appears graphically as a little circle showing there's a little hole, there's a little break in our function. So we already touched on that type of discontinuity. The other type of discontinuity you've already looked at a little bit in functions is an asymptotic uh, discontinuity, where the function tends to negative infinity going one way and positive infinity going the other way. And what in the world does it mean when we are at this point, in this case, where x would be equal to 1? Are we at positive or negative infinity? We don't know. It isn't a coherent uh, answer that we can give. So if we have y is equal to 1 all over x minus 1, and in this case, I put plus one just so you can see the other asymptote, the horizontal asymptote more easily. Uh, if we put in x is equal to one or let the limit uh, as x tends to one, what are we going to end up? We'll end up with y is equal to one all over one minus one would be one all over zero. The plus one doesn't really matter for the behavior here because this will tend towards negative or positive infinity, depending on the way that we run the limit. So this is not well defined. This is uh, not a, the function is not properly defined at x is equal to 1. 
Now, you're only really supposed to know how to deal with this type of uh, discontinuity graphically. So there is a way to determine it algebraically using limits, but it's not really on our course, so we're not going to worry about it uh, too much. If you end up with a situation like this, you have a discontinuity. That's all you really need to know. And you're supposed to know an asymptote are dashed lines here where we can see that our function is doing strange things as x goes to infinity and x goes to negative infinity. We are approaching our asymptote line y equals 1 from above and below. And for our vertical asymptote, our x is equal to one line. Uh, we're tending towards negative infinity this way and positive infinity this way, which again doesn't make sense in terms of what we usually deal with in functions. Now, you do know of a fairly common function that has this type of behavior, and that's the tan function. So tan theta uh, has a similar type behavior where it will tend to negative infinity and positive infinity on a regular basis. But that is our general characteristic. So discontinuities are just where our function is not properly defined. And if we are asked about the limit as x tends to infinity, divide everything above and below by the highest power of x, and then let the rim limit run, and lots of stuff should tend to zero, and anything that doesn't tend to zero uh, is going to be <coughs> what the function tends to as x gets very, very big. And that's what we need for limits and continuity.